Hi guys, so you know from the title, this is my tanning routine video. A lot of you have been asking for this for a really long time and I really don't know why I put it off this long, but um, such is life. I'm just gonna go through the prep, the application, um, some little tips and bits, and um, we'll go from there. So if you've watched a lot of these videos before, you'll know that prep is a huge part of getting a good sunless tan. And preparing your skin properly is going to get you a more even coverage, is going to make things last longer, and it's just going to make whatever product you're using more effective. Exfoliating is a huge part of that, especially if you have remnants of a previous fake tan. That's going to help get rid of that, even the skin out, and give you a very even blank canvas to apply your tan to. So I like to start the whole process by using a body scrub. Typically, I would suggest making your own. If that's something you want to do, I'll link my tutorial on how to do that below. But for this, I was using the One Love Organic Scrub because it doesn't have any oily residue. And to get a good tan, you want to make sure that your skin isn't overly moisturized because that's going to saturate your skin and stop your tanner adhering to the skin. Instead, you're going to get the oils in there. So I use that on my body and I just make sure to focus on any areas I know get dry, so like knees, ankles, feet, hands. I also get a little bit of kind of darker-ish skin like around my armpits. I have no idea why, so I make sure I scrub there well too. You know your skin best, so you'll know kind of what you need to work on. And then for my face, I really like to use the Soap and Glory T-Zone Scrub because the exfoliating kind of buffing beads are so fine that it gives you a very soft finish to your skin and it really evens everything out, gets rid of any kind of oily and dry buildup that as combination skin people will get and um, just leaves you with a really good canvas to build your tan on. So after I've exfoliated, I then do any hair removal. So if you are gonna shave or wax or do any of that, I would really recommend doing it before you tan. Not only does this kind of further exfoliate your skin and kind of prevent the tan sticking to any hairs, it's also gonna mean that if you do it before, you're not gonna have to shave after, which is gonna, in some cases, depending on what you're using, can take that tan off. So always shave before or wax before, especially if you're going to, because wax definitely will pick up that top layer of skin and leave you with like weird patchy tan. So. Any hair removal you want to do, do that before you tan. So if you have used an oily scrub on your body or if you have any particularly stubborn areas of kind of dry or discolored skin from a previous tan, I would really recommend using a loofah or like a travel loofah, something like that, and just a gentle foaming soap. And that's going to remove, again, any dead skin, but also any oils that are left on your skin from any products you've used previously. So then once you're done in the shower, you just need to thoroughly dry your skin with a towel, um, just pat it dry and make sure that like the backs of your knees or like under your butt or wherever isn't wet. Make sure everything is dry. If you still do experience very stubborn areas of a previous tan not coming off and kind of leaving weird dark patches, one thing I like to do is take a long bath. And in this case, I will put oil in the bath because I think it really helps to soften your skin. And then I like to soak in it for as long as I can because it will soften that top layer. And then when you get out, you will either be able to use kind of like a scrubbing mitt or you can just use a towel to kind of gently rub at the areas that are still discolored. I do try and avoid using anything with very coarse um, exfoliating bits in it, like, like salt scrubs. I'll try and avoid that beforehand just because I don't want to irritate my skin too much. Part two of prepping your skin is to protect any areas that you don't want to get too tan. So although you've taken the time to exfoliate and really even out your skin, there are always areas that you don't want to get tan on no matter what. You can get specific barrier creams for tanning, but I found what works best is the Soap and Glory Heal Genius, which is a foot cream, but it works really well as a barrier cream. So I will put this on any areas I definitely don't want any tan to stick to. So the soles of my feet, a little bit on my ankles, on my knees, elbows, palms of my hands, anywhere that I really don't want the tan to have maximum absorption, I will put a little bit of that there. So if you have any dry areas of your body that aren't typical, put a little bit of that on there or whatever lotion you know your skin likes, put a little bit of that on there just to protect it and stop it from absorbing too much of the dye. 
I also think another telltale sign of a bad tan is around your nails. So even if you aren't one to usually leave your nails painted, I would really recommend using a clear top coat or base coat before you do your tan. That way your nails are kind of protected and you can just remove it afterwards. Otherwise they can kind of get stained a little bit orangey sometimes, not a good look. Um, if you are a nail polish wearer, gel polishes are great for this because they do leave a very kind of thick um, protection on your nail so that tan isn't going to be able to seep through. But if you don't like to wear any nail polish at all, I would recommend using a nail oil on those areas and really taking the time to work it in. And what that's going to do is, again, keep those areas super moisturized so that they're not going to um, absorb too much tan. And if you do find that your nails do get quite um, discolored, Put, a put it on a little bit heavy and just let it kind of sit on there and just gently buff over it when you do apply the tan. Now, typically I will do my fake tanning before bed, um, but if I am gonna do it in the morning, I will put a light layer of lotion on my face beforehand, just because I don't want um, kind of like drier or more porous areas to take too much of the tan. One I especially like for this is the Osha um, Atmosphere Protection Cream. I've talked about it a hundred times before. It's just great at really evening out the tone of your skin and leaving it soft without too much residue or anything. Okay, now on to the actual tanning part. So like I said, I do my tanning before I go to bed at night. So I like to use the Vita Liberata Night Mask. And although it doesn't give a ton of color, it does give a nice all over glow, which I really like to use as a kind of base for my face tanning. Even if you find that you don't get a lot of color from this product, I really do like it for the skincare element of it anyway, so that's the reason that I use it. And then of course, wash your hands after you've done that because you don't want it to sink into your palms and get orange hands. So for this, I'm using an old Josie Marin tanning mitt. You can use whatever mitt you have or can afford, but if you find that the mitt you're using doesn't protect your hands enough and, and some kind of seeps through, you can always put a latex glove on and just use the latex gloves to buff it into your skin or you can put the glove on and then put the mitt over the top and you know that your hand is protected. So I usually start with my legs just because they're the furthest away area and so I like to do that first. And I'll do about two pumps per calf and I'll really work the bulk of the product into my actual leg. And then once I've got most of it rubbed in, I'll then do areas that I don't want to tan as much. So I'll do my feet and my knees. So for any areas like um, knees or elbows or anything with like a little bit of excess skin, that sounds kind of weird, but whatever. I like to apply the tan to those areas when that um, knee or elbow is bent. And I think that that kind of stops it from getting weird white marks where the mitt has kind of like skipped over areas because your arm was flat. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. And if you've got that barrier cream down first, you're not gonna have to worry about it getting like too dark in that area. So ankles was one area that you guys asked me about a lot and how to avoid getting like weird patchy feet. I think the key is to use more than you're expecting. Cause I think what most people do is just kind of pass over that area really quickly. But if you've used barrier cream and if you just have a very minimal amount left on the mitt, I think really working into those areas, especially right below the ankle bone is key because you're gonna get more of an even cover then. You're not gonna just get like a dark brown ankle and white rest of your foot. So I think work it in a little bit more than you think you're gonna need to. And then do about three pumps per thigh, one pump per butt cheek maybe. And after that, I move on to my lower back, stomach, sides, and boobs. And I really take the time to cover every single area of my body because that's another time that you're gonna be able to tell you have a fake tan is if you've kind of skipped an area. In some ways, this is easier to do when you're not covered in tattoos, but also having tattoos is a little bit more forgiving because if you miss a patch, you've kind of got like a distraction there to um, stop me noticing that you have a white area. So once I've got the majority of my torso done, I'll work into my collarbone, shoulders, back of the neck and upper back. And if you have a hard time doing your back, I can pretty much touch every area of my back. Just get a friend to help you. Um, the other thing you can do is get those like weird stick things that you can kind of like scrub the tan on your back with, but I haven't tried them so I can't see how well they work. So then lastly I do my arms, but I'll use the same technique as I did on my legs. So work the bulk of the product into the actual limb itself, and then whatever's left on the mitt, do the elbows and the hands. And again, make sure to bend your elbows when you apply it. Make sure that you bend your fingers because you don't want to get any of those white lines around your knuckles. So because that night mask doesn't give a lot of color, but it does give a good base, I like to then use a brush with a little bit of the body tanner I use 
and almost do like a bronzing with that, which is kind of nice because you don't have to do your bronzer the next day. So I just use a big dense brush for this and I'll start around my cheekbone and then work it up towards my hairline and jaw. And then once I've got the areas covered that I would usually put bronzer on, I'll just use whatever's left on the brush to do the rest of my face. The brush is also a really good tip to use on your hands and feet if you have a hard time kind of getting that an even coverage. The brush is um, a really good little trick actually. So then lastly, I just go over any areas I think might need a bit more tan, if I've missed any areas, places I know don't take tan as much. For me, my boobs, for some reason, don't take the tan as well as the rest of my body. So sometimes do another layer there or go over them with the brush. And then I'll use a face wipe just to wipe my palms off to make sure I haven't got anything left on them. And you can do this on your feet too in case you spill anything. So although the application portion of your tanning routine is going to have a huge impact on how well it lasts, the aftercare is really important too. So immediately after your tan, I would really advise avoiding any rain, sweating, splashes, anything like that, because that is going to give you weird little white marks where you've been splashed with water. And if you're sweating, you're going to end up with like white armpits, white under boobs. It's not a great look. If you don't think you're going to be able to avoid sweating fully, which is very possible, like quite likely. I like to use a little bit of like a dusting powder, something like the Lush um, vanilla powder. I just think it helps to absorb a little bit of the moisture in that area and stop it from um, kind of discoloring or anything like that. Like I said, I do do my tan before I go to bed and I usually do it like an hour or so before so that it has had a chance to sink in before I lay on my sheets. It does usually discolor my sheets a little bit but it's nothing that doesn't wash out. I would also advise just getting some dark sheets if you think you're going to be tanning a lot because you're not going to see. Again, if you are going to tan in the daytime, I would really recommend avoiding wearing anything tight. Bras are going to give you little lines here, possibly if they rub along the sides where the wires are, they could kind of discolor from rubbing the skin. And also even socks, like if you wear really tight socks that rub around your ankles, that might discolor too. So just for the day of your actual spray tan or self tan that you've done, wear something very baggy, like maybe a maxi dress or just a giant t-shirt, something very loose that isn't gonna rub. Um, if you put tight jeans on, you might end up with a white line where the inner seam is on your legs. So um, just be sensible really. Now the next time you shower, you're going to want to avoid scrubbing your skin. Scrubbing at it is going to shorten the lifetime of your tan and possibly just completely undo all the work you've just done. After that first tan and in general, you're going to want to slather on the lotion and this is going to really help to stop your skin from starting that kind of flake cycle. Um, so keep your skin as moisturized as possible, put it on really thick and it's also going to make you look nice and glowy and tan and not um, kind of like dry. So now as far as doing your makeup after getting a, either doing your own tan or getting a spray tan, that might be something that you can avoid. I like to use powder products where possible in this instance because it's going to disrupt the tan less. I will add on a little mini tutorial at the end of this just so you can see what I usually do after I've had a tan if I want to put makeup on. Um, so stay tuned for that. Now as your tan starts to fade, you can either top it up or you can start the whole exfoliating process again. Now, if you choose to keep up with your tan, I really, for some reason, prefer to top it up with a lotion. If you don't have a lotion style self tanner, you can just mix whatever your tanner is with some of your lotion and apply it that way. And I think that kind of helps to um, blend that in with your own skin when that starts to show through rather than just kind of like making what you've already put down darker. Now, there are a few awesome vegan um, sunless tanning options out there. Like I mentioned with the sleep mask, um, Vita Liberata have some great options. They're definitely a more luxury brand, so they're not cheap, but the quality really does show. That might be something you want to put like on a wish list or kind of treat yourself to, but it might not be something you're going to be able to keep up in the long run if price is an issue. I have reviewed a couple of their products on my blog, so I'll link that below in case you guys want to check it out before you buy. The brand Norvell are also great. They have kind of like mousse, spray, all different options. And they also have great options if you have a actual spray tanning system. 
So that might be something you want to check out. And I also think that they are gluten free. Dr. Dennis Gross has some great options when it comes to kind of glowy, gradual tanning um, solutions. So he has some lotions, I think. They have some tanning towelettes, which are great because you can just top up your face with them because your face is probably what's gonna fade quickest. Um, so they're great for travel. Ecotan are also a great option for um, more gradual lotions. Um, and you can usually find them in like health food stores and places like that. Now, uh, one thing you really shouldn't forget is that although you are now a bronze goddess, you still need your SPF. So don't undo all of the um, hard work you've done by getting your skin all sun damaged and gross and always use an SPF. So hopefully that covered everything. If you have any other questions, definitely leave them below and maybe I'll do, um, I'll kind of add them to the blog post to go along with this as like a and a And like I said, I will now show you my kind of quick post spray tan makeup routine so yeah i hope you enjoyed this definitely leave any of your sunless tanning tips below and uh, see you next time bye